On the day of your theory test, you'll need to take these with you. Both parts of your photocard licence, or, if you've got an old-style paper licence, you'll also need to take a valid passport with you. You'll also need your test appointment letter, or, if you booked at short notice, your booking number. Make sure you arrive on time, because if you're late, you won't be able to take your test and you will lose your fee. When you get there, the receptionist will take and check your documents, give you a locker key and a sheet containing the testing room rules. Do make sure you read these before you go in. Don't forget, you must put your personal belongings, including your mobile phone, into the locker provided. When it's time for your test, you'll be called to the reception desk to sign in. Once you've done this, the receptionist will give you back your documents and you will be shown to the test room. The test room supervisor will check your ID and ask you to confirm the type of test you're taking. You will then be shown to your workstation. Headphones will be provided, but you only need to wear these if you want the test read out to you in one of the many languages available. Before you start the test, you can do a practice session. You get 15 minutes to do this. It'll help you get used to how the test works and your answers don't count towards the final score. The test itself is in two parts, but you'll need to pass both parts in one sitting in order to pass the test. The first part is multiple choice. A question will appear on screen and you'll be given a choice of answers. You select the answer you think is correct by clicking the mouse button. You'll be asked 50 questions in total for this part of the test. Some of the multiple choice questions are presented in the form of a case study. A case study shows a scenario on which five questions are based. The subject of the scenario focuses on real life examples and experiences that drivers might encounter when driving. So, during the test, if you click on this button, you can go back one screen to review any previous questions. If you click on this button, it will take you forward to the next question. If you're not sure about a question and you want to mark it for later, you can click on this button. You can remove the mark by clicking on it again. Clicking on this button will show you this screen. Now, clicking on this takes you back to the start of the test, so if you want to change any answers, you can do. Clicking on this button takes you back to the first question that you haven't completed or attempted. And clicking on this one takes you back to your flagged questions. To get back to the test, you click on the Review All button, then click on Next until you're back where you were in the test. During the test, there's a clock in the top right-hand corner which shows you how much time you've got left. When you get down to five minutes, a notice will appear on screen to warn you. Some of the questions might have more than one correct answer, so if you don't click on more than one option, a message will appear to alert you. When you finish the test, clicking on this will end the multiple choice part. You then get the option of having a three minute break or starting the hazard perception part of the test. If you choose to have a break, the test will start automatically when the three minutes are up. You will be given the chance to view an explanation video at the start of the hazard perception test. We strongly recommend that you do this. It will help you to familiarise yourself with the test you are about to do. If you choose to watch it, you will need to wear the headphones. The actual hazard perception test has 14 film clips which have 15 scorable hazards, so there's at least one in each clip that you have to respond to. It's designed to test your response to hazards that you might see whilst driving on the road. You'll see all types of hazards in the test, but you'll only be scored on the developing ones. These are the ones that will cause you to change speed or direction. But don't worry, you won't lose points for responding to others. Remember, there might be more than one developing hazard in the clip. To respond to a hazard, you simply click either the left or right mouse button when you feel you are encountering a developing hazard. Every time you click, a red flag will appear at the bottom of the screen. This is to show that your click has been registered. However, don't just keep clicking the button to hope you get it right, because you won't score anything if you do, and you'll see a warning message on screen at the end of the clip. You need to concentrate and click on the hazards you think are the developing ones. Remember. These would be the ones that will cause you as the driver to take some form of action, such as changing speed or direction. When you finish the test, click the Continue button. You will then have the option to leave feedback, which helps us maintain a high level of customer service. The receptionist will give you your test results shortly after. If you have any more questions about the theory test itself, 
please use the following contact details. 